Generation Z, born 2000 to 2015. Digital natives, never known life without tech. Ambitious, confident, but gonna have to work the gig economy and combat climate change. Baby Boomers, born 1946 to 1965, grew up under the threat of the Cold War, invented pop music, benefited from free education and the NHS, had job security and pensions. These two tribes don't normally mix much, but we've brought them together for five Monday morning sessions in the courtyard of the Lawrence Batley Theatre. Do they have anything in common? Can they get along? Can they walk in my shoes? So the project originated from the National Lottery. They were 25 years old probably last year because obviously there had been a big delay with COVID, this actually happening. So they wanted to have a creative response to that idea of 25 years and the way that the lottery over the years has brought different people together. So they sent out a call to uh, art centres across the country. We applied for the money and we got it and here we are. The point of it is about bringing together people, people that might not necessarily come together naturally. So, you know, you might not, not necessarily get uh, older people meeting with many young people, and obviously like quite uh, the other way around. And so the idea is just about bringing people together and sharing stories and finding commonalities or surprises or things they haven't got in common as well. And just, um, yeah, just lift raising people's awareness about, about each other, really. To make the magic happen, we've recruited a crack team of specialist artists. The participants are tempted in with the prospect of tea and biscuits. There was some uncertainty. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, really, but... Um... Just wanted to give something new a go and see what was going to come out of it. I came this morning, I had no idea what was going to happen. A bit nervous about it. I thought you were just excited and then scared at the same time. I thought it was going to be like lots of little workshops and it is. When I didn't know what it was going to be, I was going to see what it was going to be. She said it is talking about. I said I don't talk about myself. So. I don't know what they're going to do. Is that part of the don't really bother me what they're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of social life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. we're getting... We haven't had hope for so long we're, we're, and we're... met other people. Really nice yeah. to be so close to somebody else and speaking to somebody. It's oh. yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you. Yeah. It's like mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> there was some curiosity. Can you tell me what you two do in life? What's your job? What's your function? This is my job. <laughs> what well, sitting in here talking to people? Man. So I work for everyone and anyone that will take me. Yes, okay. You don't have to answer all of these. You could just. But things got off to a flying start with a name game. Uh, if your name was a colour, what would it be? If your name was a person, what qualities would they have? If your name was a musical instrument, what would it be? If your name was a flower, what would it be? Tell your favourite or not so favourite story about your name. So. If my name was a person, yeah. um, it, what qualities would it have? It would be sensitive, a bit loud and confident. Brilliant. What does your name mean? And Well, I've been told it means strong woman, but um, that's what I like to go with. But I've seen a load of things online that say it means Lady of Sorrows. So. If my name was a colour, it would be gold, just because it's my favourite colour. <laughs> Uh, what does your name mean? My name means a chocolate pudding. <laughs> no idea why. <laughs> if your name was musical instrument, what would it be? Mine would be a, a whistle because it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. And that's your name in Irish Gaelic? Yes. So could you say that one more time? Anya Moira Elish. Anya Moira Elish is, is quite beautiful. Thank you, It's uh, lovely, isn't it? Yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I have very, so like my really close family call me Mo. Yeah. So we're really close. And then I get mozzarella. Yeah. So I get Everything mozzarella. was going so well. I might even be related to Donald Trump. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, actually, I'm missing it! Because I'm missing it! Back on track with a mirroring exercise. Young people famously think they know it all, whilst older people think they know what it's like to be young because they once were. Knowing what they know now, what advice would the boomers give to their 13-year-old selves? I would say enjoy every minute of your young life because you'll never recapture it again. When I was 13, I would like to have learned a second language, but I was the headmaster said, because we were a secondary school, we weren't clever enough. Well, I would tell myself, you know, don't listen to your father who told you what you know what your life was going to be like. You wanted to stop on and you were told to stay on at school. Because that's what they said at school, that my dad had different ideas because he was quite old fashioned. When I was 13, I wished I had taken more opportunities than what had been presented to me in, as far as learning and said I wanted to play out on my bicycle all the time. Follow your dreams. You are allowed to shine in life. There may be people who don't tell the truth or you don't always have to trust what other people say. So if they say don't do it, say do it. I would say remember that the most important thing is love. To love other people and to allow yourself to be loved. I was obnoxious, opinionated, adventurous, went on CND marches and I wouldn't change a thing. And what advice would Gen Z think the boomers would give? Always be yourself. Just don't. It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Like, it depends like, if you're hard working or not. Just, like, if you're working hard, then they'd probably tell them to like relax and not worry too much. I think they would have told the 13 year old self to enjoy it and like don't be nervous and like just have a good time, really. Seems like the boomers and the Zedders have more in common than we thought. We've got two groups, yeah? And we're meeting for the first time. Ah, is this where the Gen Zers clam up or talk about things the boomers can't relate to? Because what helped me through lockdown was mostly tea. Because um, <laughs> <laughs> my mum was working at home as well, because we are, we all were, so... We just come round like every half an hour with just cups for everyone, like looking out for each other and, uh, and just tea. You know? It's, it's great, you can't really get better than that, can you? <laughs> Billy, do you want, would you like to share your objects that help you through lockdown, which are fascinating? We can do both of you at the same time, I think, because you've got the same objects, haven't you? <laughs> Tell us about what these are. Right, so these things right yes. here are called poppets. That's them. Poppets. Oh. They, so they can be used for stripes, but they can also be um, younger people. Uh, with the parents in lockdown, they use them for like maths and stuff. These really help with stress and um, mainly through lockdown because it's really hard because you can't go outside or anything. As we were saying, if you're a natural introvert, lockdown might have been more than tolerable. They might have been, actually, I could do it again. But it might have been the opposite. So a good memory, a bad memory, a weird memory. My lockdown memory was the way people came together. They, they all seemed to work for, in one direction and they managed to do that without any physical contact or anything. It, it, it 
just happened. Um, me and my friends held a PowerPoint night and it was chaos. At the start of lockdown, me and my sisters all got Harry Potter face masks. And we thought we wouldn't really have to use them. Yeah, we were definitely wrong. In lockdown, I remember having parties in the living room to annoy my neighbours. My lockdown thing was Ken Dodd's DVD. <laughs> my love in lockdown was gardening. My love in lockdown was a DVD recording of the Phantom of the Opera. Uh, my love in lockdown was my father was <laughs> Me and my cousin kept FaceTiming my other cousin and she got very, very annoyed. It's my nana's birthday when we were all socially distanced in the garden, but it was really nice to see all my cousins. My lockdown memory is making my garden look like it's what I've always wanted it to. When I went for one walk, I'd collect the stones and or pebbles, and then when I go home, I'd paint them into our items. Pebbles make lovely ladybirds, and then I'd go out and walk the next day and hide them, and the children would pick them up. My lockdown memories are changing my filing system from full scrap to A4, which caused a lot of difficulties. On that bombshell, how was the first coming together? <laughs> my opinion of the younger generation has gone up. Oh yeah, they were lovely. Very much very so. Nice one. Very yeah. good bunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely kids. Nice set of kids. Yeah. Nice yeah. Kids. A bit of a shock that we're already here at the end. I think it's been amazing that we've managed to get this together in the circumstances, given the last 18 months in COVID and that people have been so separated. And I've been really impressed by the fact that the older people and the younger people really want to come together. To say yes and. Yes and. Yes and we decided to go on another holiday to uh, another island. <laughs> that the island he's on is free of all man-made uh, materials. They live very, very simple there. Perfect. Yes, and then while he discovered that, he found out a, a few miles forward, he saw turkey burning to pieces. That's actually happening right now. Yeah. Yes, and if the land is burning, it's going to be quickly obliterated. So all the man can do is swim. What happens next? Yes. He gets eaten by a shark. Okay. Yes, so that's, that's he gets eaten by a shark and he dies. That's oh. deep shark. Deep. I thought it was going to be a thing where like we did acting and stuff. I was really surprised when it was yeah. sitting down talking about creative yeah. stuff and that. I've, I've really liked it here. I wish okay. it worked forever. We met, met total strangers and we relaxed together very quickly. That was lovely, you know. And of course it was lovely to have an appointment. With... For me, one of the most important things is that um, my husband has dementia, but it's made me get, get some help and get out of the house after COVID. It may seem a small thing, but there's a lot of older people in a similar situation. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. let's pass that to Emma. This group is one of the only groups I've gone to that actually teach drama, but it's more interesting than that. You get to learn about poems and other things like that. <laughs> I hope someday to you I guess you Because it doesn't exist. And on other days, it is my friends, because they bring me the most money. little workshops every week so I learn something new and I like how the community comes together the older and the younger generation so I enjoy that as well. Yeah, the younger ones have been really nice with us and they've accepted me for what I am rather than what I'm not if you'll get what I mean. Well, having been brought up in a world of industry and making stuff out of metals and running engineering factories, I've been staggered at how good the young people are. I'm exceedingly pleased how 
right they are and confident. And just watching, you know, the laughter or the the moments happen between people, that's very special. Okay, so this is an exercise and it's a little bit like listening in uh, to every conversation in every house in Huddersfield, where real life is actually more strange than fiction could ever be. Face masks. Face masks. Social distance capitalist The house felt like a prison. Socially distanced. Take away deliveries. Painting stones and pebbles. Next door's crumble. PowerPoint nights. Coming together without being together. Lessons on Zoom. Watching old films. Jumping in a river. Missing dancing when our voices became weapons, enjoying the garden, walking 10k every day, walking 10k every day, walking 10k every day. Okay, that's good. Let's be on Okay, so bunching up a bit please. That's good. That looks excellent. Right, so this is a bit cheesy, okay, but I want on the count of three, I want you to say walk in my shoes. Okay. Okay? So let's just try it out, see how it goes. So let everyone relax. In fact I won't count, I'll go one. Okay, so relax. <laughs> on three, on three. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 I haven't done it yet. Hang, Hang on. on. Calm down. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. Everyone relax. <laughs> 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 <laughs>